About nine months ago, I created a fun video showing how to install Android Auto in your Mazda. I didn't think much about it at the time, but since then, a surprising amount of people have actually used it to install Android in their car. It's not to say it wasn't without its issues, but overall, it was a pretty positive response. Well, like I said, about nine months has passed, and the install process has vastly changed. The application overall has become more stable. It's not perfect still, but it's a whole lot better than where it was. So I figure why not make a new video of how to install it and uninstall it. And why not throw in a couple other tweaks in there at the same time since it's all now packaged into one. So I hope you enjoy. Getting right into things, the first thing you'll notice is I'm running Windows. This particular uh, installation will not work on Mac or Linux. I'm going to use the all-in-one tweak tool. In the previous video, I actually used this to install some of the other modifications. In this one, I'm going to use it to install the other modifications and Android Auto. So the first thing you need to do is navigate to the Mazda 3 Revolution forum thread. That link will be provided below, so if you navigate to that and click on it, it should open this up. We want to find the most recent release of this. In the case of me making this video right now, it is a new version of version 2.0. We're going to go ahead and click on this, and it will actually start to download it. Once it has been downloaded, you're going to need to run it, and it will install a package. Once that package has been installed, you need to go ahead and format your thumb drive. You're going to need to make sure your thumb drive is formatted as FAT32. In my case, I've already done that. It's an empty drive. Once that's been formatted, we're going to open up the installed application, the Mazda All-in-One Tweak Tool. So once the application has been opened, it will look something like this. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to have you do just to make sure if anything happens, you're able to bring it back. This is one of the big problems we had with the previous installation of it, where you would factory reset the system and it would brick it. Two things you're going to do, enable Wi-Fi and install SSH bring back. This is the very important one. This will help us bring it back if anything happens. A couple things you'll want to do. First off, I know a lot of people have asked about video players. If you want to install the video player, click the left box and it will go ahead and install that. Another thing you'll want to do is the touch screen while moving. With Android Auto, it uses the touch screen and this is kind of a big deal with it. There's other options on the right hand side like fixed cluster compass. Depending on what version has been released, that may change. Once you've selected all of your modifications, you're going to need to select Android Auto. In most cases, Android Auto will be included in these choices. During this current release, Android Auto actually has a problem with Bluetooth, so the developer decided to leave it out. The way that we're going to do this is up top, where it has Install Options. Select that. Go ahead and select Advanced Options, and now it will have Android Auto in here. We're going to select Android Auto Head Unit App. One of the things I would recommend is when you do select any option, read the box that pops up because it will give you information that is very important. So once everything has been selected that you want to install, up top we're going to select Start Compilation. It's going to tell you what modifications you want to install and then select Start. Once it's compiled, you're going to select Open Copy to USB Folder. Now we're going to open the folder and all of these files we're going to need to copy and put on the thumb drive. Once the files have been successfully copied to the thumb drive, you can then pull the thumb drive and plug it into the car. When you plug the thumb drive into the car, you need to make sure it's in accessory mode. This can be done by pressing the start button without having the brake or the clutch depressed. Once the car is in accessory mode and you plug the USB thumb drive in, it's as simple as waiting for the prompt to begin. Don't pretend. Now I, I... Hating on 
silver screens Believe in everything we come to see Go outside, it feels so good We're loving and hating and making scenes Now we just see everything we believe We just see everything The only thing left to do now is uninstalling any of the modifications that you may have installed. To do this, it's as easy as going back to the Mazda All-in-One Tweak Tool and selecting the items you have already installed. Only instead of the green icon, you're going to select the icon to the right of that and make sure it's selected as red. In order to do this, you need to make sure the left hand side that's green is not selected. So in this case, I'm going to reach one and I'm deselecting the left box and I'm selecting the right box. So once all of these are selected uh, and set for removal, you can check it on the right hand side showing that each one's going to be removed. And then again, you're going to do start compilation, start. And then it's going to go through and create similar files to the installation files that you'll put on the USB thumb drive. You'll copy it to the USB thumb drive, plug it in the same way you would for the installation, and let it do its thing. Once it's done, it will reboot the system and it should be cleaned of everything that you originally had installed.